And one thing you'll want to do whenever you use the uh, revolve mode is check that your normals are in the right place. So let me select display normals. And if I have a look here, I think that those are in fact correct. They look correct to me. Now I want to create some geometry groups, some primitive groups, which are going to allow me to apply different texture projections to different parts of uh, the bottle. So let me select and four for primitives. I'm going to select this primitive at the bottom here and I'm going to rotate uh, the little arrow until it's pointing round in this direction and then hit L. And then if I right click I can grow selection and grow selection again, the shortcut to that is Shift G. And I'm going to hit the Tab key and Group Geometry. And I'm going to call this Bottom. And that's going to be a set of geometry that's the bottom of our bottle. Now I'm going to select uh, a loop around the center here. And I'm going to ge grow geometry again. And I'm going to have to shift select a few more of these and select these right up to the top of our bottle, like so. And I'm going to select also the very top here and I'm going to again group geometry and I'm going to call this one outside and then I'm going to turn to wireframe view because I want to select the faces here inside at the bottom So let's try selecting one of those. I think that's an inside face. Yes, it is. That's all of those. Shift G to grow that selection. And that seems to be... That seems to be uh, the inside bottom. Now, let me select a face up here on the inside and let's grow that that's now reaching the bottom it's not quite reaching the top so I'm going to have to manually zoom in here select one of those inside faces and I think that's now all the inside faces And I'm going to call this inside. So we've now got groups for each of uh, the different areas of our bottle. So I've split my view into two again so that I can see the UVs as they're created. And the purpose of creating all of these groups was, of course, so that we can use different uh, UV projections for each of our groups. So let me lay down one UV projection. I want to project onto vertices and I'm going to project on to project the vertices for the bottom and uh, I can initialize it and we get uh, these UVs here and then I want another uh, UV project which is going to project onto the inside bottom again vertices initialize that then I want to UV project onto the vertices of my outside. And I'm going to use a cylindrical projection for that. And finally, a UV project for the inside of my bottle onto vertices, again using cylindrical. The next thing I need to do is separate out uh, these UVs so they don't overlap. And this is easiest to do by dealing with each 
separately. So let me insert a UV transform here after the first UV project. And I'm going to just move that to one side for the moment. And then a UV transform after the second UV project. And I'm going to move this up like so. And then after the third uh, UV project, I'm going to insert a, another UV transform and let's uh, use our trick of selecting connected geometry and then move this say over to here and I'm also going to hit the Y key so that's uh, something has uh, gone wrong there I'm going to hit the Y key to change that to scale and just scale this down a little bit. So now when we have the display pack here on the final projection we can see that these are arranged neatly. And so a final UV transform will allow me to scale this down a little bit and position it and then finally a other UV transform will allow me to select everything and scale it and position it so that it is all contained here within the unit box like so. Well there are a few tweaks that I need to do uh, one of which is involving this area at the top of the bottle here. When I use the cylindrical projection, of course, uh, this flat area will have created identical UV coordinates for the inner edge here and the outer edge. So I need to sort that out. So I'm going to, first of all, select uh, this edge loop. And then if I hit the 5 key, I convert that into a selection of vertices. And I'm going to lay down a UV edit. And let's zoom in here. And I'm going to move this down. And we can see that separated out uh, these UVs here from the UVs on the top edge, which are these ones, uh, which I can now select here, like so. And then I can move these up. And that's created some space for a texture to exist here on the top. Uh, the other thing I might want to do, uh, and here making sure I've got vertices selected, is to ensure that the vertices nearer the top of the bottle, uh, which is probably these uh, vertices here, occupy slightly less space uh, than the ones at the bottom, which have a larger diameter. And I can do this by using a soft radius. Let's try a soft radius of 0.1, and then contracting these like so. And I'm going to do the same here, like so. So that's uh, probably laid out my UVs. Let's now lay down a UV quick shade to test those. And we can see we're getting a reasonably good texture projection. Uh, this is probably a bit big on the bottom, uh, but for the moment that's going to be okay for my purposes. So what I'm going to do now is export that model to ZBrush and paint a texture onto it. Uh, and I'm not going to cover in the video the exporting, uh, the actual painting within ZBrush, but I will show you how to export the model. We can save geometry, and again I'm just going to save it to my home directory. And instead of BGO, I'm going to save it as an obj file, obj file, like so. Uh, and I can just accept that. And that will have now written out to disk an obj file that I can load up into ZBrush and paint a texture on. So I'm going to do that and uh, then come back. 
Well, I've come back out of ZBrush and I've loaded in my texture and flipped it, in fact, in the V direction so that uh, it fits properly on the bottle. And what I'd like to do now is to demonstrate some alternative methods for adding a second texture to this model. And what we want to do is add a label to our bottle. And there are two or three different ways of doing this. Uh, I'm going to start by seeing how it could be done using the compositor. Then I'm going to have a look at how we would do it using texture placement within a shader. And finally, uh, a look at how to do it using multiple UV coordinates. So first of all, let's have a look at how to do it using uh, the compositor. So I'm going to lay down an image network, dive inside, and create a file node. And I'm going to bring in, first of all, uh, my bottle texture. And then I'm going to lay down another file node, and I'm going to bring in my label. And if I go to the composite view, I can visualize both of these at once by shift clicking the second display node here. And that seems to have created an error here. Uh, let's, let's try that again. That's my label. And that's the bottle texture. That seems to have worked. So I'm just downsizing this so we can see both. And the first thing uh, I need to do is add a transform node to my label. And then I'm going to use an over operation, like so. And the label is going to be the foreground, and the bottle texture is going to be the background. And uh, let me zoom in. We can see that, let me select my transform, we can see that our label is here, and I can move it using the transform node, and I'm going to expand it a little bit like so, and that uh, should have positioned it on the bottle. I'm also going to use this opportunity to demonstrate the fact that you can, at least while you're testing textures, uh, display them directly out of the compositor. So I'm going to add a null here, and I'm going to call it out. And we need to remember the address of this. It's inside the image network and inside a manager image one, and then it's out. So if I go into my object, into my bottle, and on the quick shade node, get rid of uh, this texture, which is being referenced from disk, and instead start with op colon. And this is the syntax which is used throughout Houdini for referencing some other node in one of the networks rather than a file on disk. So in this case, it's image, image one, out. And let's have a look at the scene view. And we can see that it's now displaying that label on the bottle. And in fact, uh, what I can do is split this display so that we can view the bottle and the compositor at the same time. So first of all I'm going to convert this back into a single view, viewing the perspective viewport, and I need to remove the display of the background images. And let's zoom in. And then I'm going to uh, split this plane left and right, like so. And on this pane I'm going to change, say, to the composite view, like so, and on this pane I'm going to have a look at my bottle, and what we should find is that if we go into the image network and select the transform node, we can move our label and update our texture at the same time time.
like so. So this allows you in more or less real time to position uh, your texture on your bottle. The disadvantage of this method, of course, is that because you're transforming this uh, texture so that it uh, fits within the larger texture, you're scaling it down a, a great deal potentially, and you will be losing detail that you may want to retain on this texture. So let's have a look now at an alternative way of achieving the same thing. And let me start by disabling my quickshade node. And I'm going to also get rid of uh, this pane, like so, and switch back to the scene view. And I want to lay down and change a shader. What I'm going to do is use a constant shader, but uh, the same workflow would apply to uh, other types of shader. So let me have a look at this in the shop context. And I'm going to dive inside and enlarge this. And we can see that uh, there are two textures uh, here. There's a diff map, this is the color texture, and there's an opacity map. And what I want to do is take the diffuse texture and overlay a second texture on top of it. So what I want to do is lay down a texture node, and I'm going to add a UV transform node, and I'm going to feed in our UV coordinates here into our UV transform, and I'm going to create parameters for add the translate and for the scale for our UV transform. That's because I probably don't want to rotate uh, the texture. And then this is going to output a vector, and this requires an S and T input. So I need to have a vector to float converter, and I feed, oops, I feed the first component into S and the second component into T. I'm also going to need to create a parameter for the name of the map, and. Let me just hit P to bring up a parameter editor. I want this to output RBGA, RGBA values, in other words, include alpha. And I want the border color, and I don't want it to repeat, I want it to decal. That means that beyond uh, the area of the texture, we're going to get this, this border color rather than anything else. And I want the border color to have an alpha of zero, in other words, to be completely transparent. Let me get rid of that parameter editor by hitting P. And now I'm going to want to composite this over the top of the first texture. So uh, I'm going to take the output of this and feed it in where this first texture was being fed in. And I'm going to take the color from this first texture, the old texture, and put it into the B input. And there's no alpha coming out of here. So let's just hit P and check that the alpha for the B texture is set to 1. So that's fully opaque. And I need to use a vector 4 to float. Excuse me. I need to use a vector 4 to vector converter so that I can separate out the alpha component, the fourth component of the output of this texture node. And I'm going to put that alpha component into the A alpha input and this into the alpha input. And the operation that I want is A over B. So what this is going to do is essentially exactly the same operation uh, that we were achieving in the compositor. But because it's bringing in each of these textures separately and doing uh, the transformation of the texture here in the shader, we're not losing any of the resolution of our label texture. We could zoom in on the label texture and have the full resolution of the texture map available to us. So before I leave uh, the shader here, I'm going to go onto the output node, hit P, 
to bring up parameter editor. And we can see we've got these three parameters at the bottom, which are positioning and giving the texture map for this decal. So I'm going to select those, shift select each of those, hit the arrow, select the new group, and if uh, we do that, we can rename it decal. And if I promote material parameters, we should find that we now have our decal here. And I'm going to change this so that it's looking at our label. And I'm going to change the color map, which was our diffuse map, so it's looking at our bottle texture. And we should find that when we render, and I'll probably need to... I've got a camera set up. I've got a render node set up. I've got a render node set up. So if we render, let's have a look through our camera, we should see there we are, that the label is covering the whole of our bottle. And the reason for that, of course, is that we haven't yet uh, scaled it or adjusted it. So I'm going to go into the interactive render view and choose the mantra operator. And then as I scale down this uh, and translate it, we can see uh, the green texture moving around. And I'm just going to adjust this using these controls until we get it uh, at the right uh, place. And you can see how I'm not going to complete this because it's uh, slightly time-consuming, but you can see how you could use these controls to adjust the position of your label so that it's in the right place on your bottle. So that's the second method of adding a label to a bottle. I'm now going to look at the third method, which is creating a second set of texture coordinates.